You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Secret Circle After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Secret Circle After Show. All right, so Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another AfterBuzz After Show for The Secret Circle. I am your host, Billy Nellis. Almost losing my headphones. <laughs> and I am filling in tonight for our intrepid leader, David Schifoletti, who is on the East Coast, probably asleep at the moment. Um, but we are here for The Secret Circle, Season 1, Episode 19, Crystal. Like I said, I'm your host, Billy Nels, joined, as always, by the lovely Jason Gallagher. Good Hello, evening. Hello, everybody. Good evening. I hope you're having sweet dreams, David. <laughs> we really miss you. Aww. Well, we are back after almost a month-long break. I know. I don't like these little intermittent breaks that we're I having know. here. I know. But we but are ready to count down the final four episodes of yeah. the season. This is a good kickoff to that final yeah. countdown. They are... We're, we're, we're going for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're <laughs> doing the damn thing. It. They are. Well, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. A mm -hmm. lot of major reveals um, I'm so happy with this episode. I just have this glow going on right now <laughs> about all these reveals. You're positively glowing. <laughs> um, but let's get probably the most boring out of the way. I wanna, Deal. I want to talk about Grant and Diana first. We need to talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Wasn't too thrilling this week, at, this week, but we do need to talk about it. So Grant's back in town. I don't know if the ship... The ship's still here. I don't trust him. <laughs> you don't? I don't know what he's doing now. He's just like, he's ruined it for me. Once he once he already lied about his high falutin lifestyle, and then he's just a little crew boy. <laughs> oh, but he's just smitten. I just... No I got nothing it. for him. I'm not feeling it <laughs> at all. I really hope she gets rid of him eventually. Well, I mean, I, I have a feeling that he's going by way of the dodo. Yeah. But <laughs> we do see this week that he's set up this this awesome date. He wants to show her. I can't. What's going on here? Um, losing everything. <laughs> he tries to get... he tries to set up this great date for her. Wants to take her out to some islands off the coast of. Uh, Portland. <laughs> the San Juan uh, Islands. They're yeah. beautiful, I've been. Oh, I'm actually from exist. Washington State okay. originally. So they are beautiful. They couldn't go because they're actually in Vancouver, so yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't actually make it. Um, so he wants to take her on this date. It just so happens that it's the great crystal hunt of 2012, so <laughs> Diana is a little <laughs> preoccupied at the moment. She can't make it. And she keeps... You know, it's... I, you just, I sort of feel bad for her, though. You know, she's finally, you know, we've talked about this in the past couple of weeks since we've met Grant, that he's this normal, non-supernatural person yeah. who's come into her life. Granted, she hasn't really been in a supernatural world for too long. Right. But she's also had these romantic up and downs with Adam. And we finally have this nice guy who wants to, to show her a good time. And every opportunity is just ruined yeah at every turn absolutely and and it's adam who's consistently <laughs> pulling her back in this week uh, at, at every at every moment so i don't know i've I, diana is the, the one of the f one of the few on the show who i really like i'm rooting for her Me so deeply too and it's it's hard to watch her she in my mind is the most well-rounded I guess psychologically and emotionally, she doesn't seem as messed up as everybody else, and yeah. she just wants to have a nice, successful, happy life. And it does keep getting ruined. And it does seem to always be by Adam pulling her away from having this nice, normal life. But I don't think it's intentional. No. I don't think it's Adam's fault. 
it just so happens that he's the one who is, who knows her the best, I would say, the most intimately, right. and so can be the one to be like, Diana, you need to be over here. Right, yeah. So. Yeah, I don't I don't think that there's any sort of ill will. No, no But But it, it's just... It's just the way it the way it falls, I mm-hmm. guess, every time for her. Yeah. So we we end this episode, you know, he she finally has to pull away from the date. She has to go save the day. Um and he says he's leaving tomorrow. He doesn't know if he's coming back. Yeah. Um, and we're left with a kiss. Yeah. And and that's it. And who knows if we'll I I'm we will see Grant again. I, I don't believe that that would be the the end of it. I don't um, think so either. But I will just say that all this thing was supposedly he supposedly set up this date but i still i just don't believe him and he would too <laughs> yeah. know when where he's going to be they have those boat schedules pretty well planned out you know right. it's not a spur of the moment thing a private boat like that is booked for months in advance so he knows where he's going to be he's a big fat liar <laughs> big fat liar maybe it was just to to sort of push her into saying see and that's a mind game that's what 13 year old <laughs> girls do <laughs> no offense 13 year old girls right but in his defense she had just said i need you to be completely honest with me and in return she's giving him no honesty so you, you sort of have to he's that's almost true there's a little justification for the mind game like look you just made <laughs> me you know you raked me over the coals for my lie and now i can't get an honest word out of you so that's fair i'll we'll have to give him that at least okay I'll give you that. Okay. I'm squinting my eyes in suspicion, though. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on from that. Before we get more in-depth in this episode, we have something we, just a little bit of housekeeping we need to talk about with you guys. We, here at AfterBuzz, are part of a new affiliate program um, with Amazon. And what that means, it's really exciting for us, and it's a great opportunity for you guys. Um, you're already on our page right now watching us i'm assuming you're on our page 24 <laughs> 7 and you. if you're on our page and you also are a regular shopper of amazon.com we have made it easier for you you might have noticed already and if not take a look on our website there is a new banner for amazon what we're asking is if you regularly shop through amazon if you are happen to go there and, and you use that as your internet uh, market of choice through our website, click the webs- click the uh, little banner that will direct you in a new page to Amazon um, before you go to Amazon directly. It helps us out. It keeps the lights on here, and it makes things a little easier for you guys. So if you can do that for us, we would Please. love it. Please. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Back to the show. So I want to get into um, – before we get into the, the great Crystal Hunt 2012, mm-hmm. um, we have – shirts for that? Can we f- somehow make like right. a secret circle memorabilia shop? There, there needs. I really, there needs to be like local um, events, b- for, like <laughs> everyone. There's like a, a sponsored hunt, and <laughs> CW should get on that and give me like ten percent of the profits. Please do it. Um, but Jane is back. Grandma has come home. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly. I right. So bad. Oh, man. This poor, I don't know if the, the actress of Ashley Crow, the actress, just di- didn't like the weather in Vancouver, or if the people didn't like Ashley Crow really very much. somebody mad there. Or what was going on. But after having been gone for weeks and weeks and weeks trying to regain her memory, Grandma comes home. She finally gets that memory um, back. She has her memory back, but things seem a bit off. Yeah, I things do seem a bit off, and I was surprised at how much of a vindictive bitch that she was this time around. I didn't think she had that in her. I didn't think for a second that Jane would have been somebody who whose whole motivation was a uh, vengeful killing. Yeah, you know, she always seems to be pretty level-headed and could somehow try to get back at. John for what she perceives as these wrongs that he did, but I never thought it would be through murder. Right. Never. Yeah. Right. And and a part of me wonders if when Charles visited her and crystalled her back to health, if he didn't use the crystal to sort of push her in that direction. Yeah. Because we didn't really see w- the extent of what he did. We know that he went and then it sort of left. It pulled away from that. Right. Um. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever know (laughs) as the way we're left with poor Jane (laughs) tonight. Um, But part of me wonders if if there was a bit of like a programming done. 
I had the when same when she was fixed. Yeah, I had the same thought and for a second I even thought maybe somehow they like magicked Dawn's spirit into, into her? Jane's body because she the way she was talking and acting and the schemes she was coming up with was so Dawn in my mind. Yeah. And then, you know, that idea was obviously wrong, but right. <laughs> but it flashed through there for a second. Right. And part of it I I also have to wonder if up until this week all that we've seen of Jane has been through Cassie's eyes. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that just belies the fact that there's more to these elders that we don't know. And I think that would have been an interesting avenue to explore if Jane wouldn't have died tonight to right. see the the sort of duality that, that she is, um, the way she presents herself to Cassie and then the way that she actually is. Because we've only ever seen her through Cassie's eyes. Yeah. And to Cassie, she doesn't want to let magic exist. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if that was just an idea that wasn't fully fulfilled. Right. Um, I'm going to give them that cause I, I, f- I feel like that's what was, yeah. ha- what it was supposed to be, but who knows? Obviously we'll never really know. Yeah. Um, but so she has set up this plan with Charles to, to have John come in, um, under the guise of making, making nice Yeah. Uh, for Cassie's sake. Um, but she's totally in her badass Mm -hmm. (laughs) vendetta mode yep vindictive bitch Um, time she's hidden a cruet a witch cruet behind a sconce in the wall (laughs) Um, that sounds so waspy a witch cruet behind the sconce (laughs) which sconce have you hidden it behind (laughs) uh um, i don't why do i even know the word sconce i don't know (laughs) um but so she she's got her cruet that she's prepared years and years ago um that's just waiting the blood hasn't evaporated i don't know how that worked yeah <laughs> i think blood dries but i'm pretty sure it does i guess not in a cruet yeah uh, behind a sconce um <laughs> but so she's arranged this this event and he or not event but a little a little tea right a little tea time a little tea and um charles is laying in wait and he has the crystal and for a moment you know, she she uses the crystal because, as we find out, she believes that he's behind Amelia's death, mm-hmm. um, which we, the viewers, know that is not the case. Um, and it's, in fact, her cohort. Yeah. <laughs> her it's accomplice. Charles. Who's probably pretty terrified in that moment uh, about yeah. being found out. Um, and she uses the crystal to, as a, as a lie detector test almost, not mm-hmm. almost, exactly. That's exactly, yeah. <laughs> to... To find out the truth and finds out that it wasn't John. And once she finds out she's not going to kill him, mm-hmm. which I I thought was right in character for her. Like I did too. Like we, you know, we, like we've said, it, it did feel sort of strange that all of a sudden she wants to commit murder. But I do think that was sort of the saving grace was that when she, she found out the truth before she committed the act, as opposed to just was so certain that it had happened that she just did it anyway. Yeah. Um, but Charles is wants him gone. He blames him for the death of his wife Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, which John says isn't true, but who knows what is true out of John's mouth? Because as we saw this week, nothing. Yeah. Seems to be the truth. He is so back and forth, and I just, yeah, I don't want to connect with him at all as a character because I don't want to like think that he's this great guy and then have him rip my heart out. Yeah. And. So I just don't know what to do with John anymore. But I still have that lingering suspicion, as I do with Grant, that something is going on with this guy, and it's not going to be good. And I think, I think that's what they were trying to hint at with with his, at him at the very end, just yeah. taking that crystal. And, yeah. No, I I agree with you, and I think more so than Grant, that definitely something is wrong with John. I, yeah. I don't think that John is here in any sort of good capacity Mm -hmm. in the scheme of things. But it is hard because then you have scenes like that scene with Faye where he's really great to her um, uh, and sort of reassuring her that, you know, clearly she doesn't, as much as she wants the dark magic, she also wanted to feel like she, she had a dad somewhere that was, might still be alive. Yeah. Um, And when that is sort of squashed completely, Mm -hmm. he's very comforting and very, um, very warm whether or not that's sincere yeah is to be seen because when he when she left that smile that he had was a little yeah yeah he did handle very delicately 
delivering the message of your mom is an obsessive psycho <laughs> who is writing down her sexual fantasies that she wants to have lived with him. Right. Um, that, in my mind, was just a whole other aspect of Don. It was very swim fan, in my mind. <laughs> You know, if you're familiar with the movie Swim Fan. <laughs> the Erica Christensen classic. Yeah, where she's psycho and has all these fantasies and obsesses over this guy. Um, which is very Don. Don is Swim Fan. Um, and, but then, like you said, he's got that little smirk at the end. Like, mm-hmm. did he just lie? Did he just se- send out this huge rumor that her mom is an obsessive psychosexual freak? Right. So When, in fact, it might actually be true. And is he just trying to... Pull, pull one over on his side, which is yeah. where what where that's where I am right now yeah. with him. And we at least know, even if they did have the hippity dippity, they didn't at least birth Faye from that because she could go into the mine, right? As we saw, she yeah. could. Um, but so as Charles attempts to kill him and puts the lit match into the cruet, um, in a stunning reversal of fortunes for grandmother Jane it is in fact her own cruet yeah and she is deceased (laughs) and she is now dead so I hope she enjoyed her 12 minutes roughly of episode time (laughs) and after being gone for so long and her her lovely nine month stay in Vancouver (laughs) goodbye Ashley Crow yeah it's been real it has been real (laughs) um the her death though was very weird to me because I don't remember. We've only other seen we've only seen one other death by Cruitt, mm-hmm. and I don't remember the body going back to normal after it sort of shriveled the way that hers did. Yeah, I don't remember that either. So I don't know if that was an effect of her having the crystal mm-hmm. in her hand, mm-hmm. and whether she might not be dead. That could be the plot thickens, Billy. If, if it could have maybe spared her life, but like done some, sent, she needs to go back to the clinic for, for some more R and R and other We're not healing quite done sesh. With you yet. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't. That was weird because it, she did like shrivel up and yeah. then go back to normal. Yeah. But was clearly com- like unconscious. Yeah. And then the shop owner who had that happen before, circa Jake just shriveled up and never came back. Right. Yeah. I don't remember his skin going back to normal after it got veiny and weird. Yeah. So I, I think, I don't know. I caught that and it was, it stuck out to me. So yeah. I don't know. I, we'll see in these next two weeks, whether hopefully next week, <laughs> if Jane yeah. is dead or not. <laughs> um, but let's get on to the main event. Mm-hmm. The, the great crystal hunt. <laughs> so, at the end of last week, John has has sort of tasked the circle to find their crystals, mm-hmm. um, and that's where we pick up this week. Each of them sort of going off their own ways. Jake wants to go; he's certain that it will be at his grandparent, his grandfather's cabin. Mm-hmm. Um, Melissa is going to search for hers when her grandma goes away, um, and they all sort of split up. Yep, to go find these crystals. Um, the less we talk about Melissa's crystal hunt, the better, because that was the most ridiculous <laughs> sort of bing, like the way it lit up. Uh, and I had a, an issue with that, is every time that people from the circle come together to do magic, they always have to say something that's just really blatantly obvious, right. like lock, lock on lock. lock. <laughs> but to find this crystal, all he did was like look in the bag. They didn't say a single thing. Yeah. I thought they would have said something like, crystal, come out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Levitate. <laughs> I was expecting it to lift and not yeah, light up. Me too. That would have been cooler. Um, but I think that that's something I've sort of felt all season long with the way that magic has been depicted on this show. It's very, for a show that is all about magic, Yeah. it is very, what is the most delicate way to put this? It's very, it feels very amateur to me. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's, it's so basic yeah, and so on the nose, like literally lock unlock. Like yeah. there couldn't, I don't know. I, I I feel like it could be so much more right <laughs> than it is. I I really agree. It's it seems it's a, just a little bit inconsistent that they they are not having to do the same things to do to right. do magic. It's always sort of changing, and it doesn't seem that there's any sort of set of rules. Which being the fantasy freak that I am. 
there's always some sort of like right. There's a rule. A book. certain language you're speaking, or you have to have your wand, or whatever, you know. Of course. And it's, it, I don't, I don't understand yeah. this magic, so I can't <laughs> fantasize about being it because I wouldn't know how to play make believe. Right. This. There's no. I feel like there's no, like in every writer's room, there's like a, the show's bible. Yeah. And I feel like this Bible is missing this chapter on mm-hmm. <laughs> on the magic. Like from week to week, from writer, you know, from staff writer to staff writer, the mu- the the magic changes. Yeah. And that inconsistency is is glaring. Right. Um, and that's really been as much as I like this show. Obviously, we're here every week. We talk. We love it. Yeah. But that has been the one sort of drawback for me. I'm like, okay, why is there no why is there no coherent yeah. idea of what this what this world's magic is? Exactly. Um, so that's been frustrating. But through Melissa, we have Callum come back into the fold this week. Our mm. our uh, what <laughs> is it? Little drug our, dealer. What's our what's which is Devil's Spirit? Devil's Spirit. Our Devil Spirit dealer um, comes back in. He is his creep as usual. Mm-hmm. He finds out through a slip of. Um, the tongue by Jake that there's more than just Melissa as a witch. Yeah. Um, and he sees the monetary, uh, uh, what's the word? The, I don't know. He sees that there's money available yeah. in this, in this witch world. He's, he's Dollar out. Dollar signs are in right. his eyes. Um, so he's, you know, he follows them. He's, he's pissed at Jake. He follows them out to the cabin where we meet Jake's grandpa um, and we get a lot of information from Jake's grandpa, a lot of backstory, um, which was great. You know, we've talked, we just talked about how there's no clear definition or sort of set of rules about what magic is, yep. but we did learn some history, um, about this world of magic this week. We know that they all sort of, all these, all of the magic today came out of Salem. Yep. The witches came out of Salem. Um, they splintered into three circles, two of which stayed on the East coast and one of which, Settled in Chance Harbor, mm-hmm. um, and I, I was that was great. Like I, I've been waiting for some sort of yeah. history um, into this world. I completely agree. That I got so excited because that it made sort of a foundation. Like kind of went along with the rules, like we were talking about before. It made something that things can stick with and go for. Right. And I got excited about the possibility of Meeting other characters. Other and more witch sex, <laughs> because that so far has been probably my favorite scene. Right. So no, I I was there, and when when he went on to explain that, um, you know, if the other circles had been compromised and if they rejoined and the the balances of good and evil would shift, uh, that's where I went. I was like, we have the possibility to expand this world to mm-hmm. leave Chance Harbor, um, or to have people brought into Chance Harbor if we don't leave Chance Harbor, but. That's great. That's I mean we're so limited and there's literally seven characters on this show. Yeah. Um and we're so I do think at times they struggle with you know the 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 random pairings of people to to have there be some sort of variety. Um but now this new information gives the opportunity to bring um to bring change to Chance yeah. Harbor to to shake things up once we sort of end this witch hunter uh arc of the, the end of this season. Exactly. Um but so he explains to them that his his crystal's hidden deep in a mine. Um, <laughs> that sounds like an innuendo. <laughs> <laughs> um, spelled so that no dark magic, um, which can can find it. Mm-hmm. And then he also drops another sort of um, info bomb that the six crystals can be combined to form the Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. Yes, Shia LaBeouf will be in season <laughs> right, two. And, and uh, Kate Blanchett's Nazi. <laughs> no, she was Russian, wasn't she? Yep. Um, she had a fierce bob going on. Yeah. But so they form, and I, this is another, I mean, that it's a, the Crystal Skull is a little cheesy to me, but it can become the Crystal Skull, and their powers combined are the most powerful, um, and all the land. Um, and so that's sort of a little bit of an illusion of what, John is out to do, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, but so they, before they can even get the map, figure out where they're going, Callum steals it. Um, and now we're off on a chase. Yep. And they um, task Melissa and Adam to go first. They're closer to this really elaborate mindset that was yeah. built for this episode or found for this episode. Um, just another one of those ridiculously abandoned, decrepit 
um, buildings on the outskirts of Chance Harbor that no one has decided to just bulldoze. Yeah. That is left to... Yeah. <laughs> left in a shambles. Exactly. Uh, the, <laughs> the whole... In my mind, an abandoned mine should be... If he was really trying to seriously hide this thing, it wouldn't have been that easy to be like, okay, just take a left here and a right here and another and right over the and then a left swing. and over the rope swing. And there <laughs> it is on top of this support beam. All you have to do is reach up and get it. And why did he need a map? He hid it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're hiding something, don't draw don't a map. Draw the way to get to it. No one will find it, but I need a map. Like, no. <laughs> Remember. You want it to stay hidden. <laughs> oh, man. But so they get there, and they they do go through this, the rope swing. Um, that was that. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they did a great job. It was tense. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, someone's going to fall. Me too. But now, like pulled away from it. I'm like, that was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I was on edge. I would talk, I In the thinking, moment, yeah. they, 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 they did a really good job of that. Yeah. And I thought Callum was going to already be there yeah. before them, but he's slower than I thought. So yeah, slower, yeah. but more adept at, uh, tra- traveling through mine shafts. Yeah. He somehow <laughs> then one came up thought. on him unaware. Yeah. When with his pistol. Left. Yeah. And, the other thing that I even wrote down, you know, he has them at gunpoint. He's demanding the crystal. They stupidly give it to him. And all I could think is, you have a crystal. Yeah. Use it on him. Is somehow the crystal not supposed to be strong enough even to go to defeat the power of ore, iron and ore that yeah, defeats that, their magic, I, I, That has to be why they mention that. Yeah. I don't remember ever hearing that iron ore deflects magic. I don't remember that either, but... Um, so that I'm now think that wasn't even in my head when yeah. we watch it. And now you reminded me that, that obviously that's what that must be the reason why, but that is a lazy <laughs> thing to throw in just to make them have to give him the crystal instead of use it awesomely on him. <laughs> um, we want more magic. I know. Like that's the point <laughs> is magic. Witches. Um, Expelliarmus that pistol. Right. You know what I mean? But so Cassie and Jake get there. Cassie clearly can't go in. She says that it makes her feel like her lungs are collapsing. Mm-hmm. Um, they, you know, they get out. They mark Callum. They get the crystal. The day is saved. Um, and we're left with this scene. Diana explains to Cassie that she wants out of the circle. She needs a break from the circle. Yeah. Um, she'll see the witch hunter thing through. Yeah. But she's then she's out. Cassie says... Diana, we need you. You know, you couldn't even be there today. You got there too late. And then Diana says, I didn't get there too late. I couldn't get in. She couldn't get in. And my world changed. This was the (laughs) best reveal ever. Right. We have been speculating for months now about who this second black girl child would be. Yeah. We thought it would be Faye. Yep. Everyone thought it would be Faye. That's mm-hmm. clearly what the show wanted us to think. We we all thought it would be Faye. Um and I never saw Diana. I said earlier today I hope to be Melissa. Yeah. I thought that'd be kinda cool. That would be really cool. I it never did it even cross my mind that it would be Diana. Which made it so much better when we found out. In retrospect now I'm thinking about how long I had my hands up like this after we started <laughs> talking about it. I'm this that <laughs> excited. Um but it it just came out of nowhere, and that was wonderful. Which means John and Elizabeth had some good old witch sex. Right, which means he probably didn't kill her. Which means, yeah, he probably didn't kill her. And it just, my mind exploded about, does this mean Charles knows? And he's been covering it up this whole time, or does he have no idea? And then he's going to find out and, and be then, really ticked and yeah. come, off, come after John even more with a vengeance. I just, oh, I just couldn't. I can't. I can't. Also... Now now that we're talking about it, I'm thinking about how Adam's attraction is to the two Blackwell girls. Mm-hmm. And that just has to say so much. There's just so much that it's can so happen much. with this. And it also adds this whole new dimension towards the friendship between Cassie and Diana. Now, they, yeah. now they're actual sisters. Yeah. So it's it's done so much to, in in one very brief moment, to really explode the world of the secret circle. Yeah. Um, and such an exciting turn. That's for so these great. next three episodes. And that is where uh, it it left us tonight. So let's yeah. jump to a commercial break. Mm-hmm. We're going to come back. 
We're going to get you some news and gossip, and we are going to predict where this crazy season is going. So we'll be right back. After Buzz TV. Hi. I was once like you, a lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag coworkers about it at the water cooler. Then I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzz TV produces after-show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds, like post-game wrap-up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzz TV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different aftershows from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives and more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV aftershows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? All right. Well, welcome back. Before we get into news and gossip, I just want to remind you guys, if you're watching us on our website or if you listen to us through iTunes, um, please, if you like what you're seeing, comment, like, subscribe, download, tell your friends, go to Amazon, do everything you can. <laughs> we love your support and we want more of it. So thank you so much for tuning in to us week after week. Um, and yeah, just, just keep, keep it up. Um, let's jump into some news. After Buzz TV News. All right, so this week we were introduced to Jake's grandfather, who's played by the veteran genre actor John Delancey. Chris Zilka told the Huffington Post how pumped he was to have Delancey play his granddad. He said, I was so excited that he got cast, and then we shot him out in one day. It was like, man. <laughs> uh, but watching the man do a scene was literally like watching an acting class. So Zilka's really pumped that they've got this new guy to play wow. an elder. I wonder if he'll be back. I hope so, because I love that whole senile thing going on. And he revealed yeah. so much in one episode. So. Yeah, and now that Jane is gone, yeah, I wonder if more. that's an opportunity to have that sort of elder mm -hmm. who knows the history, who can sort of explain the history. Yeah. Um, there's also a more like of a character to him, because he's yeah. obviously insane. Exactly. So that's more fun. Jane was just so grounded and normal. <laughs> um, Where's the fun in that? Right. Blah. Yeah. Blah. All right, so Britt Robertson and Phoebe Tompkin attend the Glamour book release party on, uh, on April 16, 2012. Now that filming has wrapped on season one of The Secret Circle, the cast, who have been bound to Vancouver for the majority of the year, can finally find the time to enjoy the glamorous living of L.A. We will be able to get... We... Oh, excuse me. We will be getting a lot more paparazzi pics of the cast now that they're able to be out and about. The first round of pics comes from April 16th when Britt Robertson and Phoebe Tonkin stepped out for a party hosted by Glamour editor-in-chief Cindy Leave and celeb stylist Rachel Zoe. Mingling with the fashionable crowd that included fellow CW stars Ian Somerhalder and Nina Dobrev, the duo celebrated the release of the mag's new book, 30 Things Every Woman Should Have and Should Know by the Time She's 30. You can head to wetpaint.com to check out all the pics of Phoebe Britt and all the other glamorous peeps. And that is your news That's and gossip. Right. I have one thing oh. really quick. Go. I had a heart attack for a second uh, researching some news and gossip when I saw the headline, Secret Circle to be given a break. And I freaked out that our show was going to go away. And if you saw it, don't freak out. It's just a racing horse whose name is Secret Circle. He's a <laughs> big time winner. And so they're letting him rest for a little bit so he doesn't overdo it. So sleep easy. <laughs> sleep easy. I, that's great. <laughs> that is great. All right. It's the time of the night. Let's get into some predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. All right. Let's recap. Yeah. Jane is dead. Mm -hmm. Diane is a Blackwell. Yep. Uh, Grant's off to sea. Grant's, Grant's a sea. Yeah. Um, what else? I mean, those are the biggies. Yeah. The Crystal Skull. <laughs> the Crystal. We have five of the six pieces now, they said. Yeah. Which that was an issue for me, that it was so easy to get five of the six together when they're supposed to be protecting their grandchildren. The elders are supposed to be protecting yeah. their grandchildren. Well. And they're this easy. Senility. Yeah. It's... So my prediction is they're for sure going to find the sixth piece because it's been easy this. Right. <laughs> it's easy. 
um, all along, and because we need more drama once the skull's together. Mm-hmm. And I really just think John's a bad guy. Yeah. Big time. So what, where do you, how, how dead do you think Jane is? I think she's going to be damn dead. Yeah. Like real, real final dead. I think. Okay. I also think John's going to try, this isn't related to that, but that John is going to try to uh, seduce Don. Because yeah. he knows this sort of feeling. So he's, there's going to be at some point where he uses his sexual prowess to get something from Don. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree with you on that one. Um, I mean, they've been teasing at that, and uh, there's no way that they can't now bring it to the present Yeah. Um, on that. Uh, it will be interesting to see the the finality of Jane. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I'm 95% sure she's dead, but mm-hmm. 5% of me wouldn't be surprised if she isn't because of the crystal. Surprise. Um, I'm back. Yeah. For the third time. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but so th- this Diana revelation, I mean, it changes really everything. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you, th- where do you think, we we obviously see from the previews for next week that it's out in the open that this is going to be revealed pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you think this is going to affect the most? I think there's going to be. I think it's going to affect Cassie the most. To answer your question, I think they're. I think they're even hinting at it in their looks that there's something about the two of these Blackwell daughters that is good versus evil, mm-hmm. and I think that that the evil one is Cassie and the good one is uh, Diana. Just because Cassie, once she's discovered her magical ability, from the get-go she starts to succumb to dark magic. And Cassie has known about, I mean, uh, Diana has known about being a witch all along and is always in control. There's something about, I don't think being a black hole necessarily means that you're dark. It's just you're more powerful. And I think she's going to be the one to just really be the center of good power. Right. And Cassie's going to be equally as powerful, but can quickly succumb to that evil yeah. side. Well, all right. From everybody here at After Buzz, Billy Ellis, Jason Gallagher, David Skifletti in spirit. We miss you. Um, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We will see you next week. Hit us up on Twitter, Billy Ellis underscore duh. Jason Gallagher L.A. Uh... Subscribe to us on iTunes, like, comment, rate, tell your friends, go to AfterBuzzTV.com, shop at Amazon, uh, search on Bing, do all that great stuff, and we will see you next week. Have a good night. Good night, y'all. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 